Well, it's hard to believe our 12th session together, the very last video uh, that we'll make for this class. Thank you for accommodating uh, me being double booked for these last two times. Um, so we want to look at um, uh, doing epistolary work and this ties in with your uh, final exegetical uh, paper. Let me get to where I can um, pull this up. So um, for your paper, it is a uh, 13 to 15 page uh, paper or 12 to 15 pages. And what it is is an exegetical paper. And so this is the culmination of the uh, Bible interpretation process, writing an exegetical uh, paper uh, for those seeking ordination in the PCA. This uh, paper is uh, part of the ordination exam usually, and so this is a practice way to do it. And uh, Dr. James uh, wisely picks some common uh, passages. So this is the kind of um, paper Presbyteries would look to in terms of their examinations. And this is uh, uh, how you do it. Uh, so um, w the purpose of the exercise and even the whole class is ultimately to lead up to helping you write a better exegetical paper. So the first thing to do is to pick one of these passages. So I would encourage you to read through uh, all eight passages and see which one interests you the most. Uh, what I would do after that is I would just take a, a couple of hours and I would read through the whole book um, and ask yourself the question, uh, what is the whole book trying to argue and how does that relate to this particular passage in the book? So uh, what I've to told you so many times, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. And the best thing you can do in uh, reading and understanding is just read the whole thing. Um, you know, uh, take time, read the whole thing and start asking yourself, how does uh, this passage relate to the whole? That will be the, the absolute key as you begin to do this. And then if you go to the uh, workbook, and if I can just get this where I can see that, um, we have this not nice outline for writing an exegetical paper. Um, so Dr. James is saying, you know, state why you choose. This is all part of the 12, uh, uh, to 15 pages. Uh, state the main theme of your uh, passage in one well-formed sentence. This is a thesis sentence. So after you've worked through the whole thing, say, this is what this passage is about. This is why this passage uh, is in the Bible. And then uh, using the um, tool that you were given, the road concept, um, determine what kind of passage it is. Is it historical, political, symbolical? Uh, determine and discuss the historic cultural background, the context, um, based on each component of the road. And if you want to do that, um, we have that in uh, page five of your workbook. Just go through and ask, well, um, you know, what type of scripture is it? Uh, is it an epistle? Is it a gospel? Um, what is the historic, historical setting? Um, um, do, does the passage involve any kind of place or um, anything like that? Look at the events surrounding the writing um, in the epistolary passages, um, let me just transition to this. In all of these passages, um, 
the epistolary passages, you're going to have uh, historic background. So you might want to go to Acts and read about uh, how Paul uh, and what Paul did in Ephesus. The same with uh, Philippi or uh, his relationship to the church at Rome or Second Timothy. You want to do all that background uh, work um, as you're going through um, Uh, the historic setting, uh, the events surrounding the writing. Um, I'm going to show you uh, how uh, to use Logos uh, to do this in a, a second. Uh, what do you know about the recipients uh, uh, of the book, their culture, their nationality? Um, what's the occasion of writing? When you read the whole book, uh, like you read Romans, uh, uh, ask yourself the question, why did Paul write this book? Uh, what was he trying to do? Um, wh why did he feel impressed by God to write this to the church? And so part of the exegetical process is determining the occasion. Uh, what can you tell me about the author of the, uh, what can you tell me about the date? So um, this uh, tool of the road uh, you can use this in terms of your exegetical paper. Um, study the passage grammatically and lexicographically. In other words, uh, uh, look up the different translations, look up the important words, uh, do a key uh, word study uh, in terms of those who are headed toward uh, ordination. That's what the Presbyterians are going to uh, look for. And uh, I'll show you how to do that again. So um, uh, do that word study. Then make an interpretive paraphrase in your own words. So once you've decided and done all the work, uh, take the passage. And so again, uh, it, it's these passages. Take that passage and, um, and do your own personal little commentary. Um, and then ask what are the practical applications of this for Christian living? If this was written to the church and God wanted some things, how does that apply um, to us today? And build a teaching plan. If you were, you know, had 30 minutes to present the results of this paper, how would you do it? Um, I am not sure what this um, Roman numeral three is uh, pages two through three, so we can um, omit that if, or if you find it, you're welcome to do it. And then uh, this will be the grading um, a rubric on the paper. Now, uh, let me show you uh, how in Logos, and if I can just get Logos where I can see it. Okay, so um, let's say, um, you know, you were doing uh, Romans uh, 7, uh, 22, um, or Romans, maybe we'll do 7, 14. Um, you use this passage guide, so, uh, and then you uh, look it up and it will begin to find uh, all your resources. Now, one of the resources, if you have access to this, um, that is just incredibly helpful is this exegetical summary. Um, this is done by Wycliffe Bible Translators, uh, some of the best scholarship in the world um, the people who work on these uh, things are just uh, unbelievable. And so we have this passage, we know the law is spiritual. Um, the exegetical summary will go through and read dozens of commentaries and just summarize some of the issues. So uh, instead of we know oidemen, some manuscripts have Oida men, which in Greek would be I know, and um, the 
Greek New Testament um, selects a reading we know with an A rating indicating that the text is certain. Only um, uh, God's Word uh, takes a reading for I know. So this is an exegetical point. You can put something like that in your paper. Then you have uh, the word law. Now, uh, whenever you do um, a passage summary, in your guide, you also can use this exegetical guide. And so if we do that, um, uh, what we're going to get uh, will be all the um, words. And uh, if you don't know Greek, uh, it will actually tell you how to pronounce the word. Oida. Oida. Nomos. Nomos. Um, so, uh, if we want to do a word study on law, um, we... Um, uh, let me pull up the ESV. Uh, just to remember how to do this. Uh, remember that when you go to the text, um, you do a word study. Um, you can um, pick the um, original word, do the Bible word study. Um, this word's used 192 times in the Bible, it translates this in the Old Testament. It's from this uh, root, uh, uh, all of these words. Um, you can do the Bible word study in Logos, uh, start looking up these passages, um, and you, you, have, you will have access to a lot of these. Uh, TDNT, a fantastic uh, source, Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. Um, the TDNT abridged version probably is helpful because you can read the shorter um, uh, article. Uh, it will tell you about the background of the word. Um, if you have a great quote, of course, you can paste that into your paper just make sure you put it in quotation marks uh, to show that you're quoting um, so you go through the passage uh, this exegetical summary will give you um, a great uh, uh, idea of the uh, possibility so law most people will go the law uh, God's word now uh, God's standard uh, this word has a definite article, so it's the law. Um, and in the exegetical summary, uh, what relationship is indicated by for? For uh, we know, and gives a summary. Uh, what is meant by calling the law spiritual? And, and we have here a summary of just all these great commentaries. Uh, Fitzmaier, uh, Schreiner, uh, great one from Barrett. Um, Sandy Hedlum, um, C.E.B. Cranfield, my favorite uh, Romans uh, one, uh, Morris, right up there, fantastic. Uh, John Murray from Westminster, uh, the Baptist one by Robert Mounts. Um, so all this, and notice in this exegetical summary, if you have access and if, um, you know, you're there in Birmingham, uh, if you don't have access to Logos, you can go to a library. Uh, more than likely, they'll have this in a paper copy. I know Samford uh, will have it. And so you have uh, access to great um, uh, research, and it can give you hundreds of hours of research boiled down to you can get it in an hour. And so uh, all of these, you know, when it says, I am fleshly, um, uh, who is the I? Paul is speaking of his own experience, okay? A lot of people take that. Paul is speaking for his own experience prior to becoming a Christian. 
I don't think that's the right view, but these are the people who argue it. Paul is speaking of his own experience as a Christian. Uh, I follow that view. Um, uh, Paul uses the first person to describe the experience of Adam. So just in that short time, and so like uh, James Dunn uh, takes that view, um, in a few minutes you, you can um, have a summary in from this extra summary of Romans. And if you have access, use that. Um, I, I use it all the time. Then what I do, whenever I look at a passage, I also try to find ancient, medieval, and modern um, commentators. The ancient is this ancient Christian commentary on scripture. Um, so if you have access to that, or if there's a good library near you, we'll have a paper copy. This will give you in a short time what Origen thought, what uh, Augustine, what Ambrosiaster thought. Um, and you have access uh, to it for any passage in the Old Testament or New. Uh, that gives you the ancient commentaries. When you start talking about medieval or pre-critical ones, well, L Luther is always important if you have access to that. Um, you can find what Luther said about the passage. Uh, lots of uh, good libraries will have a paper copy of this. If you have it in Logos, uh, course it's much easier to use. Um, John Gill, he is always worth uh, reading. Uh, John Gill is the person that Spurgeon was afraid that uh, he couldn't follow in his uh, footsteps. Uh, and John Gill had been dead uh, a long time before Spurgeon went to Gill's uh, church. So um, one of the best scholars of all time uh, if you have access, uh, um, this uh, Spence is always worth a, a read. Um, so that gives you, uh, Calvin is nearly always uh, worth a read. Um, the ICC, uh, Cranfield, uh, if you had to only pick one commentary, uh, Cranfield's probably the best uh, one. He's a very judicious uh, interpreter and he's very, very, very good. Uh, the Hermeneia series is probably a little more left uh, than most people would be comfortable with, but a lot of times they'll give you background. Um, uh, you can use uh, this uh, Reformation commentary on Scripture. Leon Morris, a fantastic interpreter of Romans. Uh, well, anything Leon Morris writes is nearly always good. Um, Doug Moo has written a very recent one. Um, uh, he, he was my teacher at Trinity and he's fantastic. I don't always agree with his positions in Romans, but he's well worth the read. F.F. F. Bruce, one of the best scholars who ever lived, uh, he's uh, worth a read. Um, from the reform perspective, William Hendrickson, um, he's going to give you the standard reform take on most any passage. Um, Linsky is a Lutheran, so uh, he, very good Lutheran. He's going to give you the standard Lutheran. Uh, so in all of this, um, you can use the uh, passage guide to get to the, um, you know, what the secondary literature has said. But I want to do give you a caution um, it's very tempting when you start getting into secondary literature to stop reading the text, um, to just read what other people say. And um, I am so pro uh, commentaries. Um, commentaries have been very helpful to me, but you really do have to be working always to stand on your own two feet. If the Bible meant, uh, if God meant the Bible for normal people, um, and you're a normal person, that means you should be able to get most of uh, what's out there just by reading, if God is an effective interpreter. And so, um, read it on your own. Read the whole book. Re ask how this section fits uh, together 
um, and then um, then make your argument and then compare what you say with what other people say. If you want to uh, look at background material, well, I mean, here's something you should always do, look at the parallel passages. So if they're, um, we know the law is spiritual, well, this is a great uh, cross-reference. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Um, um, we know the law is spiritual, but I am fleshly. Uh, uh, John 9, he answered, uh, uh, you were utter, born in utter sin. This is the uh, Jewish leaders against Jesus. Um, uh, Romans 7:14. we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh. So uh, those parallel passages... Um, uh, you can do the same thing with the cross references. These are all the cross references. The, the more you do cross reference work, uh, if the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible, this is always going to be a helpful uh, thing. Um, if you come down uh, important words, uh, you know, you're probably going to want to look those words up in your passage. Um, you can do a little bit about Paul and read about his life. You can read a little bit about the church in Rome and Romans uh, by reading dictionary articles and reading through. Um, there are a lot of outlines uh, that you can compare what other people have said. Um, so uh, in this ancient literature, it tells you where people have quoted um, you know, Augustine's always worth a look. Uh, Theodoret is good. Athanasius is good. Um, Basil is good. Uh, all of these are helpful and you have access, uh, you know, if you have time. Um, sometimes they're parallel accounts uh, from uh, Jewish material. Uh, that could be helpful. And in the uh, Apocryphon Pseudepigrapha, um, um, you know, if you have a lot of time you're writing a detailed paper, that could be helpful as well. Um, so, uh, in terms of uh, your uh, practical application, this sermon starter guide may be helpful. Um, and so you may explore that. Um, so, well on your way, uh, you have 12 to 15 pages to demonstrate your uh, skill in that. And so that's what, um, that's what this paper is meant to do. Um, it's meant for you to take one of these passages and demonstrate um, taking the initial steps of doing an exegetical um, paper. Um, this is a great exercise. Um, it's a way to learn how to examine a passage and then present the passage. Uh, and so this will be uh, very helpful to you to do um, to do this exercise. Um, I do want to say I've really enjoyed our time together in this class. Um, I just immensely enjoy uh, looking at the Christocentric, meta-narratival, plot-symmetrical elegance of the story. And then when you come to the epistolary uh, documents to realize that uh, these books are making glorious and practical, um, helpful things for Christians today and st stand back and say, well, uh, what can I learn from this? What can I do? So um, do, uh, you know, write the final paper and uh, when you get it finished, uh, uh, submit it to me. I'm uh, really excited about uh, helping you uh, grow as you do this. 
Um, I will get uh, these papers graded as quickly as I can, and I really hope that we have opportunity in the future to study God's Word together again. My prayer is that God will continue to bless you and uh, all the bless, all the best as we continue to uh, try to be in God's power uh, workmen who need not be ashamed, who rightly divide the word of truth.